Hi everyone, so I'm Anna Brombaugh, I'm the principal clarinet of Palm Beach Symphony, and the last video I'm going to make for you today is describing how to make a proper clarinet embouchure. Now, this is a really important disclaimer. This embouchure helps you play with a classical sound. I think if you're going to play klezmer or jazz, you're going to use a very different embouchure. So this, this particular video is good for just setting up your embouchure to play with a really clean, pure orchestral sound. If you want to learn other styles of music, go check out other videos that have specific embouchure. So the first step to building a really strong clarinet embouchure is thinking about our chin. And I like to describe the chin as being just as important as the bridge on a string instrument. So the bridge on a string instrument holds up all of these strings and it suspends them across the instrument. And I think if you think of your chin as being like the bridge and having contact with the reed, it's the same thing. So if you were to replace the bridge on a string instrument, which is made out of a really, really strong, sturdy piece of wood, if you were to replace that with a sponge, you would have a really dull, unresponsive, collapsed sort of sound. The same thing goes with our chin. If our chin acts like a strong piece of wood, we get a strong sound. So when it's really strong, and I'm really using the muscles, I get a strong sound. When I collapse the chin, I get a really collapsed sound. So the first step is building a strong chin. Now, there's a few different ways we can do this. One of which is thinking about blowing out um, either a candle or blowing down the side of a mug of a hot beverage. So that instantly sort of makes your chin really flat and firm when we really go for that strong air stream. Another really good way of, of practicing this is by buzzing like a brass player. So putting your, your finger here and just doing a basic buzz. I don't think that buzz could actually play a brass instrument, but the point is that my chin is really, really flat. And when I do that, I can sort of feel that curvature like the chin almost going in like a concave shape. So the chin is the first thing. The next step is thinking about our bottom lip. And the reason that I use a tooth guard over my bottom teeth is because the bottom lip should be basically one with the chin. It should really be helping the chin. If your bottom lip is really collapsed like, like that, you're not going to get as strong of a sound. Again, strong bottom lip, collapse bottom lip, I can barely play. So the bottom lip should go just directly over the bottom teeth anymore and you lose control of your muscles. Any less, like this, also not as much control. So the bottom lip right over the bottom teeth. Then you slide the clarinet in just enough, this is very different for each player and each mouthpiece you use, so make sure you experiment with how much mouthpiece you're actually taking. Um, it should be just enough that, see where your, your, the corners of your lips naturally kind of start to come in? It should be just enough that you don't have to actually squeeze any more than that. So I take about that much mouthpiece, not very much at all. So you slide the clarinet in and you push against your top teeth like this, like that. And then I flatten my chin. And the last step is to tighten your corners. Really feel that these corners, the corner of your lips, I'm calling them, kind of come in and down. So I always think of arrows, muscle arrows as pointing in and down with the chin. So we have our chin, bottom lip, teeth, and then tighten. That's the basics of the embouchure. A more advanced step is to also practice your embouchure using double lip embouchure, which is by covering the top teeth with your top lip, like this. This is a great training technique. It's also a way that a lot of great clarinetists 
play all the time. I personally play double lip probably 60% of the time I'm playing. I'm playing double lip. Um, it, it frees up the sound, it frees up your air. It's, it's, there's really no downside beside the fact that it takes a little bit more muscle so you can get tired a little faster. But what that's teaching you is to really use your top lip muscles. When you do double lip, you feel that the top lip is also coming down and making contact with the mouthpiece. As you can see, there's a strong amount of muscle really working there. When I apply that back to the regular embouchure, I feel I have more contact with the mouthpiece and more control with my sound. So that's the basics of the clarinet embouchure.